a quick tutorial on the basics of Solar Cloud. So I'll be mostly covering the setup and I'll be covering some differences between Sol Solar Single Instance and the stuff that you have in Solar Cloud. So this will be mostly terminology, a uh, quick overview of the admin page, just some differences. So if you're not familiar at all with Solar, this might be a little bit difficult to follow. I'll expect some basics in Solar, but otherwise I'll just breeze through a very quick example of getting started, which is going to be similar to the reference guide that you can find online. So the first thing is you want to download a later version of Solar. So in my case, I downloaded the latest version off their website. Put the link in the description. Pretty much you can just download Solar from here. And um, yeah, you can just unzip it and then you should be ready to go. So let's just uh, switch over to our folder. So I'm using it on a Mac. And you're going to see something like this. So it's not going to be much special. So I think Solar Cloud was brought in in uh, Solar 6. And um, essentially what Solar Cloud is, is it allows you to distribute your search. So uh, what distributing allows you to do is you can uh, use multiple servers instead of having like 16 solar uh, single instance solars hooked up to a load balancer now you can have 16 different servers all dealing with the same thing but you have replication you have the ability to um, shard the data over so if, for example you're doing indexing you can do distributed indexing uh, if you're indexing a node then you can have another node which won't delay the search process stuff like that and all of that is handled through this mode called Solar Cloud, which allows you to do distributed search. It handles the sharding with uh, for you, and it lets you bring up an Apache Zookeeper. And the Zookeeper stores all those config sets, and it also uh, monitors the routing. So if you send in a request, it will handle the routing about which node it goes to, making sure the leader nodes are OK. It keeps track of nodes that are dying. So if it doesn't see a pulse, the Zookeeper will automatically say, hey, that node looks like it's dead. We're going to reroute the request to another one. Or it also allows for all of the other uh, just essentially routing and config sets. So when you spun up a solar cloud you can choose to use an embedded zookeeper which is not ideal for production use or you could choose to have a zookeeper ensemble in which case you would have several zookeepers and you want to have the zookeepers uh, try to maintain an odd number of zookeepers in an external ensemble uh, in case some of them die you always need at least 50 percent running. So in this example, I'll very show, show a very quick uh, like a quick quick start guide on how to get started with this. So yeah, Solar Cloud is designed to provide a highly available, fault tolerant environment. So in this example, we're going to use the interactive setup. So this is already provided through Solar. So in order to get started on this, we're going to go to bin slash solar slash cloud. Spin up the cloud. So we're going to do nodes. So nodes are like kind of like servers that will spawn up. And ideally, you'd put these on separate machines, not on the same machine like myself. But if you want to use default, we'll just press return. Uh, or I guess two. OK, I had that weird quote there. A port, we're going to keep the same. Keep the default ports. Looks like I already found, uh, already made, tried this once. So Now it's spinning up both. Uh, similar as before, it spins up through the jetty layer, spins up like a solar instance. So I would theoretically be able to open up the admin page on both. So this is going well, pretty pretty good so far. So it's binding it over to a port. Now we're going to do our collection. So we're gonna I'm gonna call it getting started. So shards. So this is like we're spinning up into our data into shards. So let's put like two. We're gonna have two replicas. Now config set. Now um, I'm not sure how what version you guys use solar, but there's no longer a sense of a uh, schema.xml. They changed it over to a managed schema. It's a little bit different for these. Also, all the config sets, you're going to have to push them straight to Zookeeper. So before, when you edited a config set, you would edit it, bounce solar, and hey, like it's back up. And now you can do your schema changes and whatever. But now, you need to push it straight to Zookeeper. So there's a Zookeeper CLI, a command line interface, that comes in with solar, and that allows you to um, send the results over and then it reads it through the zookeeper and the Z nodes and it assigns it appropriately. So we're going to use a default config and now it's uploading the config set to the embedded zookeeper within Solar. So that's what it's doing right now, which is pretty nice. Oops, I just lost my dog. Whoa, what just happened? Okay, got it back. So those are the config sets. So I just used the config set that was uh, built into Solar. So now we should be able to visit our Solar Cloud instance. 
So let's, uh, let's do that right now, actually. Let's check out what's new in right here. Let's give a little bit more toxins. We are basic over here. So, uh, we're in the new solar UI. Now, within the solar UI, uh, we first see, see this red. So, <laughs> just a fun, like, something I noticed. In the older version of solar, it used to be orange, but now it's red. So, this is the same old page we had before. Uh, nothing much new in here. Uh, logging, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm guessing it has new new things to log. So inside the levels, you can now uh, log zookeeper-related things as well. There's a lot of uh, zookeeper options in here. And we have this page called Cloud, and this lets us basically get a view from zookeeper on how it's viewing the active state in all of our nodes. So we did two shards, and we had two replicas, and we also have these. So we see the replica. Uh, this guy's active, but this guy's the leader. So it's not master slave with Zookeeper, it's leadership election instead. And we see this one's a bit darker, so these are our two nodes. Looks pretty great. So if one of them goes down, then the other one should still be alive, and our collection should be working fine. So this is pretty cool. So maybe I'm actually going to try uh, closing one of these at the very end, and let's see what happens. If I take down the leader, it should switch over to the other one. So this is a pretty neat view. As you get more complicated, this gets more interesting. And we have another view over here as well. Or we can see like the Z nodes inside. We also have this collections thing. So this is kind of like the cores. So you can like reload the collection, which resets the caches. So you can do this through here. You can also add new collections uh, through this UI. Or you can do it through the uh, RESTful interface. So you have both. You can just pick one. Uh, standard Java properties, not very interesting. So, uh, this is pretty interesting. So, before in uh, single instance solar, we, we just had the notion of having like a core. So, it's like a Lucene index. This is our index for all our items. It's only on one machine, so we just have a core. Now, you're going to look at this and you're like, okay, so I have a collection and I have a core. So, what's a collection? Well, essentially, you need to understand that now this is split across multiple nodes. So, it's a little bit different. So, we do have cores, but these are our shards now. Ah, this is one of my shards. This is one of my nodes. So if I actually query this node, I'm only getting a partial amount of my answers because this is only one machine. So what I want to do is I want to query against the collection. And when you query against the collection, it goes up to Zookeeper, it finds out all the shards, and then it look, queries through all the shards. Instead, you don't want to query through just one shard because you won't get all the answers you want. You'll get incorrect results because you're not going to be searching through all the results. Your queries won't be going through all the results. So you want to be always querying, you query against collections. And if you notice, the collections is similar to the old interface with the exclusion of the screen. Cores, you can see the health of the core, you can see the ping of the core, you can see what plugins are, caches and whatever else. But you can't see much more than that. Okay? This is segment info. We can't see much more than that. But inside of our collection selection, here we can do the rest of the stuff. So this is a normal querying using select and so on. Now we have to pay attention that some features found within solar, single instance, might not work when you have multi sharded instances. So one example that comes to mind is the post filter join. So if you do a, try to do a join on a multi sh uh, multiple sharded uh, index, it won't work. Another way of thinking of this uh, getting started is uh, you can think of the getting started. It's um oh, I just lost my document. Um, getting started is like a logical index. So logically, this is one sort of index. But physically, remember physical index over here. So that's physical. So yeah, this looks pretty similar. So there's not much actually different uh, over here. Um, similar idea. So inside files, we have minus schema, which I already mentioned. So the solar is really trying to push you into, um, instead of editing the XML yourself, uh, you added it through the API, so it's sort of safer. Yeah, and uh, solar config, it's a similar idea. So not much different here, you just configure your config. There's a migration guide you can find online, which is very useful in terms of figuring out what you want to change if you're migrating your schemas over from an older version of solar. And last but not least, streaming expressions. Now, these are really powerful tools, and essentially, if you're familiar with other languages, streaming expressions provide a simple yet powerful Stream processing language for solar cloud. So there's a bunch of functions you can do. You can do request response stream processing. You have uh, interactive um, MapReduce, 
You can do aggregations, parallel relational algebra, so distributed joins, intersections, unions, complements. You have distributed graph traverses. You have machine learning and parallel iterative model training. You can do anomaly detection, recommender systems, text classification, feature extraction, NLP. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with Solar. And this stuff is really cool. So I'm just going to show a very quick expression, uh, expression, and then afterwards we can talk, uh, give a more in-depth tutorial probably later, if you're interested, on actually how to use uh, streaming expressions within Solar. So this is basically the syntax, so it's expr equals, and you don't include the expr equals part. Uh, so you can do this. This should work. Let's try this. Let's modify the getting started. You do with explanation. So this is our sort of diagram of what's actually happening behind the scenes. So we have our data source, which is the solar getting started collection. And we're applying over a uh, stream source, so this is search. And we can do a decorator over it, for example. So I don't actually recall the syntax, but you could do something like a unique over it. And the unique would basically allow you to remove anything that is um, any duplicates. So you could do it unique, and then you just set over. And that would let you basically remove duplicates, which would be a stream decorator, because you're not getting it from data source. You are getting a stream source. Then you're applying a decorator over it. Now you could do this in parallel, so you could do multiple searches. You could do there's a lot of different things you could do. So it's very powerful, and there's a lot of different plugins you can also add on to if you're interested. Streaming is basically the way to go for the future, and all these things are just tuples essentially. And um, what you get back after streaming all of these like tuples is you get the um, you get this last one, you get this last like object returned, which is the EOF marker. And all streaming results will end with this EOF marker. When you have EOF true, you know you're done. And the last thing I'm going to be talking about is I'm going to talk about SolarJ, which is the Solar client. So SolarJ works with streaming as well. So you can use uh, SolarJ to programmatically query Solar from outside. You can pass in the Zookeeper address. Which uh, you can find, I think the default is 9110. And you can query Zookeeper and you can fetch all this data yourself. So within uh, SolarJ, you can just simply instantiate a stream factory, get the Zookeeper address, and um, say, specify the collection name, and then you can construct your own stream objects and then create a parallel stream and fetch all your data. So you can do all of that within SolarCloud. So this is all built into SolarCloud, which is really cool. So I think I'm, that's, it. that's all I'm going to cover for this tutorial. The rest should be similar as before. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll be glad to answer. Thanks for watching.